right off of like the tree line. It took two steps, one in the middle of the road and one off the road. And it just went down the, the mountain. And I just remember telling my brother and my husband, Bobby, I said, you guys, what the hell is that? And I said, that's a freaking big foot. It was probably about I'd say eight and a half to nine feet tall. It had huge long arms. I just remember seeing the matted like fur on its like a shoulders and its huge head and it was like a darkish blackish brown fur. And I think we startled it because it just like happened so fast. Oregon the ninth largest state in America. Known for its diverse landscapes, from the windswept coastline to the volcano-dotted Cascade Mountains, there are many marvels to behold. But perhaps Oregon is best known for its thick forest. Forest area covers over 30 million acres, with about 60% of the forest land being owned by the federal government. Oregon has over 65 conifer and broadleaf trees helping create an incredible diversity of wildlife. Wildlife which includes a large population of black bear. While black bears are considered a medium sized bear, males can weigh over 500 pounds. Oregon is also home of large deer and elk populations. They are beautiful to watch but have been known to become a nuisance around homes by damaging trees, crops, and landscaping. Oregon is also home to coyotes and wolves, which help control populations. But perhaps the most feared predator is the cougar. Oregon's estimated population of cougar is over 5,000. But could there be another apex predator? With over 200 reported Bigfoot sightings, could Oregon also be the home of Bigfoot? To find out more about possible Bigfoot in Oregon, we turn to Bigfoot researchers Bobby and Karina Long. We joined Bobby at Lawson Bar. He's doing a follow-up to a Bigfoot report. I'm doing a follow-up video for Eric Jensen's report near Lawson Bar. It's close to the little town of Canyonville, Oregon. And we will start right here and work our way up the riverbank and see what the landscape is like. Eric reported that uh, they had come down in the early morning hours to take a swim and that something was throwing rocks at them. And when he threw the rocks back, or threw some rocks back, the uh, animal ran away on two feet he did not see it but he heard it splashing in the water so anyway we're gonna work our way up the beach and hopefully where it happened we'll get on film and we'll verify the area anyway and uh, it's pretty pretty densely forested I'd say enough to support a large animal, such as Bigfoot. Um, this is the other side of Lawson Bar. Um, the, young, the younger people in here come in here back over behind these trees and they play disc golf. All right. After a thorough search of the area, Bobby was able to conclude that the area could sustain a Bigfoot. Though no evidence was found, the report is taken seriously and considered to be true. A few years ago, while Bobby and his wife Karina were out conducting field research, they were able to take this photograph of what appears to be a dark figure standing next to a tree. Later, an aftershot was taken of the area. 
We have created a height comparison and can estimate the figure to be around 8 foot tall or more. I am returning home from an investigation of a foul odor and multiple tree knocks from a six month period and on Monday, August 19th, 2013, Tanya Burns reports that she smelled a horrible, rotten, skunk smell out coming from outside her window of her home and later on that evening or maybe it was a day later she was out back having a smoke and there was tree knocks coming from above on the hill she also reported that they've only lived there for six months but in the six month period there's been tree knocks on several occasions not just the one night um, I went down and spoke with her and they allowed us to cruise the property and we actually cruised about probably the whole entire property into some BLM land and we came back to their home well near their home there's a very large barn and we explored the barn for tracks or anything that could prove you know that there is something out there and what we did find that was unusual was there was two deer hides hanging from a rafter and one of the deer hides had been torn completely almost down to nothing it was just hanging from the tip top and the reason I found it unusual is because there's no way that an animal could have reached up that high and got you know to the deer hide and we found a big old huge bag of I couldn't tell if it was wool or some sort of animal hair. I don't know what it was, but there was two big large bags of it. Probably, they, it looked maybe like sheep's wool, but anyway, I grabbed a little piece of that for myself just to kind of look at it. It didn't smell, it smelled more like a goat, like a, a sheep would smell, so we ain't going to jump to conclusions there. Over the last few years, Bob and Karina have been able to collect many reports of Bigfoot sightings and have managed to find some evidence, mainly in the form of tracks and tree breaks. Here's Bobby investigating some tree breaks. Right here's the tree break and we are about six inches thick. It's been down for a little while because the leaves are starting, the needles are starting to turn brown. And also, what we found here, we didn't find any tracks, unfortunately. It had been raining the last few days. We've got a older tree break right here, just next to this cedar that's broke down. And we also have another tree break just within a couple of yards that is very old and it's actually started to rot and we've got a game trail going up through the bushes while the tree breaks could be evidence of Bigfoot it's not as convincing as the numerous foot tracks found by Bob and Karina Perhaps the oddest track find was this four-toed track. The track measures 10 inches long and 4 inches wide. It doesn't appear to have the same attributes as a human foot track. Perhaps the fifth toe just didn't leave an impression. But there have been other reports of four-toed tracks being found. Tracks and tree breaks should be considered possible evidence of Bigfoot. But eyewitness accounts can also help unravel the mystery. Let's join Bobby as he interviews witness Bill McKissick about his sighting. Bill McKissick, who had a run-in with a Bigfoot back in the 70s, 
Ooh. And he's sitting down to tell us a story with us. We get goosebumps already. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it started. Uh, a friend of mine, we're, we're living out in Cow Creek in Azalea, about 15 miles out. Back then, there wasn't very many houses out there, Bobby. I mean, there's like two or three houses out there, wasn't very many. Um, we'd been out there about two years, I guess. And um, I was helping my dad on the ranch. That's all I did. Was there on the ranch, and it was taking an afternoon on a Saturday afternoon or Sunday. I can't remember the days for sure, but. It was on the weekend, and we were out there messing around, a friend of mine and I were, and uh, we'd been all over that place that morning, and we would, went back to the house and had some lunch, and was coming back out, walking down the road behind, between the house and the barn, I don't know, probably 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet from the house, and uh, got to smelling this, oof, the smell, man, it was just horrible, and uh, got to looking around, and we seen it, well, at first I thought it was the bear behind us time. And I thought, thought that was what the smell was. So we turned and, and him and I both were looking up the hill and it stood up. And when it stood up, I think it realized we seen it and we see, and he seen us. And he turned and went up the hill. I say he, but yeah. I do that because I don't know for sure whether it was female or male. Okay. But it was definitely Bigfoot. There was no doubt about it. <laughs> no doubt about it. Look at that. <laughs> Man. I don't right. think I've ever been so scared in my life. You told me um, when we did the in initial interview <clears throat> that you had uh, noticed it, and your uh, your dad, you were living with your dad at the time. Well, my family, You yeah. guys had noticed that uh, you had a few calves missing and found actually one dead cow? Yeah, cow. I didn't, uh, there was no marks on it uh, when we found it. Um, my dad actually thought that we had shot it, but we hadn't been shooting up in that area. It had been way up on top of the hill where we were shooting at. So I'm assuming that's what it was there for. Either that or it was maybe the, the creek or the pond that was just down there behind the barn. Yeah. So I'm not for sure about that, but. And you also had mentioned that ch there was uh, chickens missing too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, chickens. Uh, eggs and chickens. Oh man, there's that actually been a lot of stuff missing there around the house. We just thought it was coyotes. Yeah. You know, and I, I still think probably, probably some of it was. Some of it. Yeah, it was coyotes, but um, it was awful close to the house is what really spooked me and I told my dad about it and he's the type that you know if you don't see it you don't believe it yeah. so you know he kind of dismissed it and I hadn't said anything else to anybody else about it uh, until I told you Bobby about what happened. Well in your description you, you said that the Bigfoot was nine foot tall. Um, oh, at least. Was that based on how large the stump was yeah. it was up behind it? Yes. Once and it, three once foot it, wide at the yeah, Oh man, he was big. Once it yeah. stood up, I mean, like I said, when I first seen it, I thought it was a, you know, just a bear sitting there, a big black bear. Because, you know, it, it was squatted down, the stump was big enough that all I seen was just a, about mid-drift and the shoulders up and then the head. And I thought it was just a bear sitting there looking at us, and that's what we thought the smell was. But when it stood up, it stood up and it kept going and going and going. <laughs> I, and I'm telling you, I don't, I've never seen anything like that. I hope to God I get to see it again, but... Well, I didn't bring it with me, but we uh, actually, not exactly where you've seen your Sasquatch. Uh, we're um, very near there. It's called Horseshoe Road. I know where it is, yes. Okay, we pulled uh, prints from there. Really? Yeah, I've got, I have got. actually got one at the house. Wow. And uh, our sighting was nowhere near there, but, you know, there's been uh, reports yeah. out of that area, so I'm not surprised if you didn't. Uh, did see one. Oh, I did, Bobby. There's no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. Now, I, you know, when I first thought about it, and you know, I talked to my my dad about it, I thought, well, maybe you know, maybe I maybe I was wrong. But after I get to thinking about it, there's no bear that big that I've ever met. Not in this not in this area. Well, um, even though it's a almost a 40, actually, it is a 40 year old story. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're telling it with so much heart and so much description that I, you know, personally, my experience, and I've known you for a long time. I I think that. You may have seen one. Uh, you know, I, to me... It's giving me goosebumps thinking about it. <laughs> I, you know, I actually had a dream about it the other night after we talked and we did this, you know. Uh, there was no doubt it was Bigfoot. It was it was bipedal. And when it turned to go up the hill, it was going. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't walking. It was running. And it would it was it was clearing distance a lot faster than a man in a monkey suit would have. And why would or be, even a bear, probably. Yeah, even a bear, yeah. And it was on two feet. Bear, as far as I know, don't run uphill on two feet. I don't think it's possible for a bear to run on two feet, that, you know, up the yeah. hill. I've seen him stand up on two feet, yeah. but not run. Um, Is I there don't... anything else you can add to the story? Um, um, okay, you described you heard footfalls. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, you could hear boom, it when he was boom, running. Boom, yeah. Boom. Wow. 
Yeah, you could hear it. He was he was definitely putting them up, taking them up and putting them down. It didn't take him long to disappear, because um, I think what happened was when I look back at my friend, you know, with this astonished look on my face, because I didn't, you know, I, I, it, it astonished me. By the time I looked back, all I seen was just one more glimpse of his back as he disappeared. And once he disappeared, you could still hear the footfalls, but you couldn't see him anymore. Okay, so you could hear but not see him yeah. after the initial two good sightings, and then he just ran away. Bobby, I was close enough I could see facial features. Ooh. I'm not joking. It. And it wasn't no, it wasn't no snout. It was it was humanoid. I mean, it wasn't human, but it was humanoid. Close enough. Yeah. yeah. The the nose was flat. His cheeks were round and, and just, I mean, that guy's head looked like three sizes of a foot, I mean, a basketball, like a beach ball. There you go. At least that big. He was huge, Bobby. With my experience with him, Look at that. yeah, I know. <laughs> with my experience with him, did, did, I, were you able to notice if it had a coned head? Like, um, they call it a sagittal crest. Yeah, it's I, you know, Bobby, like this a little bit. To be honest with you, I didn't really, other than notice, noticing how big the head was, I didn't see. I'm not saying that it's not there. I'm just saying that I didn't actually pay attention because I was looking at him, not scared, at his scared, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the overwhelming fear when you see something like that is, you know, it's fear, disbelief, and then... Astonishment. Yeah. Yeah, a few weeks after that, you know, I, this friend of mine, I'm not gonna, I can't mention his name because I haven't asked him, but um, this friend of mine that was I, we, him and I talked about it a couple of weeks later, and, you know, it, that's when I realized what it was. At first, I didn't know what it was. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't explain it. I never seen anything like that before. So, to be honest with you, and I had never heard anything about Bigfoot back then. Yeah. So I didn't know for sure what it was. I know I thought, you know, I was, like my dad said, I was seeing things. But him and I got to talking about it, and two people seeing the same thing. That's not seeing. That's not hallucination. That's no. not, that's honest fact. Yeah. Had you been by yourself, it had been uh, hard harder to believe the story. Exactly. So, and uh, I know who the other witness is, and. Uh, I trust him. Even though Mr. McKissick's sighting happened in 1971, it wouldn't be the last time a McKissick family member would see a Bigfoot. In early 2014, the McKissick family had another sighting. So this is a recording of Doreen McKissick and her sighting on February the 22nd of 2014. Can you tell me what you saw? Oh yeah, we were going, uh, coming, going by our friend's house because they weren't home. And as we went past that very place there on Weaver Road, that's right up where you start going into Wood Park up there, I looked to my left and there was sheep down below. And I seen this. I thought it was a shadow uh -huh. that was in a tree, hanging up. Uh, it looked like a shadow. And then the closer we got, it was something standing there with their its hands up over the lamp. Oh wow! And it, my grandson. I went and never thought nothing about it. But my grandson said, "Grandma, did you see that?" I said, "What is that, River?" He said, "I don't know, but I'm not getting out of the vehicle." And it was, it was big. It was big. It had, it had its hands up. You can see his, ha his hands, or whatever it was, hanging over the other side. Like it was hanging on the limb like that. Like it was going to swing or something. Huh. And it was right above. And when we slowed down and we went back up, it was gone. It just disappeared. River said, Grandma, don't get out of the car. Don't get out of the car. Hmm. And I said, well, what was that? He said, I don't know. And I told Billy, Billy, what was that? And he said, I don't know, but I've seen it. He said, I said, it looks like a, a big, here's he, but Billy, how, that had to be eight foot tall, something like that, eight foot tall. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was big. Mm -hmm. And it freaked me and River out. And every time we go up on Weaver Road now, we watch for it. And I've never seen it again there. About how close were you to it? Could you oh, see any facial features? or? Yeah, it was hairy. It was hairy. It was hairy. What about the brow or the nose? Did you see? Did no, you I wasn't up that close. It wasn't close enough mm -hmm. to the... Huh. And its hands, did you see its hands? It's, it, it, was hung, it was hanging onto a limb above him. So was his hands like gripping onto yeah. it? Yeah! Yeah! Or was he just hanging, his hand Like his hand over. was hanging over it. 
Oh, okay. Like it, he would get a swing or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And and River was like, Grandma, what is that? So was it up kind of like on the cliff of a road, like? like okay, a it was right where you come around the corner there yeah. and start to go up in the wooded part. Okay. Right there, right there above that sheep field. Oh wow. Huh. And Billy said, Dory, where to go? I said. I don't know. River said, "Don't get out of the car, Grandma. Don't get out of the car." Huh. About how long do you think that the um, encounter was? Well, we seen it, and then I and Billy said, and then, then we looked over. He looked over at River, and River was like, "Why does she?" And Billy just put on the brakes and backed up, and before we could back up, it was gone. Oh wow! So about ten seconds. Yeah. Wow. And you say it was around dusk. Yep, right before dark time. Wow. And the sun was, it was just as the sun was starting to go down. Oh, okay. Sounds like to me you saw something. Yeah, I would say so. So you've always been a skeptic before. Yes. And this has made you a believer now? Yes, it's made me a believer. River, we got to hear River talk about it. He's like, Grandma, don't get out of the car. That thing was big. What was it, Grandma? I said, well, I don't know what it was any more than what you do. And then when we backed up, we were going to go back and check it out. It was gone. It was just like it disappeared. It was gone. And then the next day, we went up to see our friends up there, and there was two sheep down there dead. Okay. So he was hunting. He was doing something, yeah. Sounds like he was hunting. Yes. Huh. Well, thank you, Doreen. Um, I'll get this put in, and we'll see what we can do with it. That'll work. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go hunt for, for it again, because our friends live right up in the wooded part there, backed up on the hill. Huh. Well, when you do do that, let us know, and we'll all go together. We'll go together. It Maybe sounds. Maybe we can uh, find some more uh, evidence. That'd work. That would work. Yeah, it would. Well, Made a believer out of us. I know. I'm uh, ecstatic that you've seen one because you've always been such a skeptic. Yep. And uh, now I can actually talk to you without you making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> you wait till you see River. You ask him, hey, River, what'd you see up on Weaver Road? And he'll tell you. He'll say, I see Bigfoot. I see something. It was something. It was big. He said, I told Grandma not to get out of the car. Don't get out of the car, Grandma. And he was just looked like all the blood had drained from his face. Right. He was white. Wow. And he, talked, he told everybody about it. He says, Grandma, tell Dad what you see. Tell, tell, tell him what we see. And it was really weird because just up and around the corner is where our friend lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Have they said anything about Not it? Not yet, but I'm going to ask them. Huh. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. I wonder if um, maybe here in the future you could take us up there and maybe we could find out if there's some kind of footprints or... Yeah. Because I'll never forget where it was at. Ever. Know. Show us the tree branch. That I will. Seen. It was weird because, you know, most things, if you see them in a tree or something like that, they're climbing. Yeah. Or something like that. So it wasn't. He was just standing there looking around. Mm. So he must have been hunting or something. Yeah. That or he was getting ready to swing and go across the road or something. That, yeah. Like he was, but he saw you and so maybe. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that concludes our interview. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, this is River Sampson. This is Doreen McKissick's grandson. And he is also going to give us his interview about his sighting on February the 22nd of 2014. So why don't you go ahead and tell me what you saw, River? Well, we were um, driving up on um, Weaver Road and up in the hills, yeah. And we saw um, this big, tall, hairy looking thing going like this with his hand up by a branch uh -huh. and he was holding the branch and one was like this yeah and then we drove past it and I'm all guys did you see that and ever since I didn't see anything so did it scare you how, how did it make you feel when you saw that well, we I, th I thought it I, th I, I said do we want to go now what did you think when you saw it? Did you think, well, that was a bear or is it a We didn't know what it was. No, I, th I, 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 I said that I, I, think this, I think this might have been a Bigfoot. That's wow. What I so yeah, did you think that after that, after you saw that, that you were afraid to get out of the rig or 
Did you want to go back and check it out? That's or? why I don't like the dark. <laughs> oh, you think there's a Bigfoot in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> well, is that all you saw? Do you want to add to your sighting? That's all I saw. Can you um, tell me about your, like when you saw it, did you see any features that you thought was weird or that looked like big. another animal, big, what, I mean, it's how big and tall and it was kind of a little, um, fat, <laughs> it's kind of fat like a chimp, but it's way taller and way bigger. While out late one evening doing field research in the Days Creek area, Karina catches a visual of a possible Bigfoot. We're out at Days Creek, Oregon for our fourth day. Um, it'll actually be the eighth trip out, but the fourth day. Um, it's Tuesday, August 27th, 2013. And the reason why I'm here is initially we had a report that a couple had seen possibly a Bigfoot parting the tree line and we had came up to investigate it and in the meantime the uh, we found right at the beginning of the road right off the pavement we found a track that was about 14 inches long and about six inches wide I'll give or take just a few you know a little bit um, that track had been disturbed um, possibly somebody had driven their car over it but it was still a good impression made in the softer mud before the car hit it and also we found an impression in the a gravel bar down on the creek just about an a eighth of a mile back down this road um, and where I'm standing here right now is another investigator who would be my wife her name's Karina Long we were coming back on the on this road um, we came down here to turn the car around um, and there's a, a clear cut just down the road and we turned around just near the clear cut and there was still enough light in the woods to see but it was pretty dark she yelled for me to stop the truck she seen a Bigfoot um, she clearly described the, the upper torso the arms and the legs and then it stepped across um, I'm within just a few feet of where she's seen it step through the trees um, she's seen it step uh, actually no it was going this way and which we were going this way to begin with I think it was possibly flanking the truck and when we turned the truck around up the road and came back I think we took him by surprise unfortunately Karina's sighting wasn't captured on video but she reveals the details in an interview conducted by Bobby hi guys this is Bobby from the crypto crew.com this is my wife Karina she's normally behind the camera um, we were doing some research and track castings of Days Creek, Oregon on August 22nd of 2013 when uh, we got a response from some tree knocks. Um, we decided to, the castings weren't drying fast enough, so we decided to go up and turn around and we were going to come up and pick them up the next morning. And this is when Karina had an uh, encounter. And unfortunately, I was driving and was unable to see what she saw, but I, I uh, heard the tree knocks and also smelled the same thing she was smelling. And I'll go ahead and let her tell you her story. Well, while we were down catching or doing the tracks, I kept saying, God, what is that smell? And he's like, what smell? I'm like, you can't smell that smell. It stinks. So then he's like, well, this isn't drying, so let's let's go ahead and load up, and we'll go up here about a mile, and we'll turn around, see if we can see anything. So we drove up the road, found a good spot to turn around, and as we were up there, the smell was even more intense, and we turned around, and as we were coming down the mountain, I yelled at Bobby to stop. I said, "There's there's a Bigfoot right there walking. And he's like, what? And I said, yes, there's one right there. I said, hand me the camera and I'll get a picture of him. But in such of a hurry, he grabbed his wallet instead and handed his wallet to me. And I was like, that's your wallet, silly. I need your, I need the camera. So he hands me the camera and by that time, the Bigfoot had already walked away. 
He probably was about eight and a half foot tall. He had a large stride. I seen the full body figure of it from the side view. Didn't see any distinct markings on its face or anything. Dark complected and he was heading up the hill almost like he was stalking our truck or like we were going and he was like trying to get the heck out of there. So I don't know what was going on but it was in the same direction of the footprints and the smell. So I'm assuming that we saw the Bigfoot that made the tracks. Um, the time of day was dusk. Um, we think that the creature was probably watching us and was making a getaway and we just happened to, Karina just so happened to spot him out of the truck window. Um, how did you feel when you seen the creature? Just shocked that we were just, we had just got two footprints that we were getting the, the track from and then to drive up the road and have the smell and then, and then to see it. It was, it was a very big day for us, I thought. All right, is there anything else you can add to the story besides uh, just us being up there doing research and you uh, see, having a sighting? Is there, did you have any type of uneasy feeling or? I had the feeling that we were being watched when we were down at the creek doing the footprint, but I just thought maybe it was just me creeping myself out. And then, of course, my son was there, and he's scared to death of him, so I think a little bit of him scaring himself and then me being afraid of my children being hurt or anything, it just kind of startled me. And then when we saw it, it was, it was breathtaking. I was like, wow, there's another one. <laughs> Still waiting on a few other people to buck up like Karina did here and get on video with me and uh, we hope that uh, we get some more calls from out in Days Creek you know we'd like to get more witnesses and have uh, a bigger story not I mean we've already got a pretty big story going here but we would like for more people to come forward and, and speak with us and we're right here in Riddle you know we're pretty close to Days Creeks so if any of you watch this and you live near here, or even even if you're a hundred miles away, we'll try to come up and uh, do an interview and follow through with some research in the area. All right, thank you for watching. After a video was posted online of a possible Bigfoot filmed in West Lynn, Oregon, Bob and Karina were able to investigate the area. The original video was filmed behind Merrillhurst College. Bob and Karina found the exact location. Merrillhurst College parking, that's my van. And Here's the trail. I'm going to try to get the exact same spot as that lady was filming from with her dog. Um, and right here is an apartment building of some sort. watched the video a couple of times so I kind of got a general idea I'm thinking this is the spot where she was filming the dog and over here is where she would have seen the Bigfoot I don't know how old her video was um, this is March 19th. While searching the area, Bobby noticed several houses nearby. There was also a man walking the trails behind the college. The man stated he walked the trails almost every day. There was also a sun deck along the trails. So Bobby was able to conclude that it was most likely a person walking the trails. A closer look at the original footage 
suggest it could have been nothing more than foliage, and as the camera panned, it appeared to be moving. Finally, another witness comes forward to do an interview with Bobby and describe the details of his event. I'm down with David Bailey today. Uh, we're going to do an interview about his 1991 encounter with a Bigfoot, uh, Dace Creek, Oregon. And uh, Dave came to me, uh, it was about last summer sometime, I can't remember the exact date. And uh, he tried to do a story then, but we were really busy with the company and stuff, having a picnic. And so we're going to do it today. Go ahead and... Um, basically, uh, me and a bunch of friends were up hunting. I was like four or five of us. Uh, going up the road, two of us get out, and we're going to walk up to the road, pitching rocks over the embankment, you know trying to scare some deer out and uh, we're sitting there tossing rocks and I mean, it's a steep embankment and uh, there's a little it's knoll down in down off the bank there and we're pitching rocks over and finally throw a rock over and deer jumps up and starts going and Right after that deer jumped up, and it was like it caught our eye because down on that knoll, I mean, it was pretty bushy. There was trees on it, good-sized trees, and we just seen trees getting pushed over. I mean, it was, and we were just standing there looking because first thing we thought bear, but as we seen it, we just and as close as we were, we were like, that's that's no bear. There's no way that it'd be moving that fast and that big for it and be pushing all those rocks or those <clears throat> trees like that. And bear bulks just kind of standing there looking at each other going, oh my God, uh, that wasn't, that was no bear. You know, we had, at that time, we were just kind of walking up down the road with 22s, you know, so yeah. you're like, <laughs> If that's what we think it is, you know, that is a big foot. The 22 ain't gonna do much good on us. And man, we started hightailing it up the road until we finally found our buddies and we get we just got in the truck and and they were kind of looking at us like, what the hell? And we were just kind of like, let's just go somewhere else, man, because I, I I don't want to be here anymore, you know. So um, yeah, I gotta say it was the thing. Thing was huge, and you know, I, I would I would say it, it was no bear. <laughs> so, all right, it said that. Uh, okay, you already said you were pretty scared, but yeah. you didn't really say nothing to anybody else besides until you came over and spoke to me about it. No, man. Yeah. So yeah, it's. I mean, I I'm, I may have mentioned it before, but it's like it's one of those things. Doesn't come up in conversation a whole lot. Keep it in the back of your but, mind. You know. So. Well, Karina and I went out there about eight times and tried to find the spot that you described. Yeah. We were unable to find where exactly where you seen it, and uh, but we did pull castings from the creek and from one of the side roads. We got uh, two castings from out there. So I'm 100% positive that you seen a Bigfoot. Yeah. And you know what you're seeing. And your partner that was with you, I had a little short conversation with him. He said that he really didn't really know what it was either. Yeah. But it was big. So he said it was really, he said he didn't really remember it until I brought it up. And yeah. he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. It's already a known fact that Oregon can sustain large animals like elk and bear. At birth, an elk calf weighs about 35 pounds. Female elk grow to weigh around 500 pounds and males to 700 pounds or more. A male elk stands five feet at the shoulders and is more than eight foot long. According to the National Bear Conservation Foundation, 
Black bears normally eat around 34 to 37 pounds of food each day. Oregon has good populations of elk and bear, so it seems the food source is already in place to support large animals. It would seem safe to assume that a Bigfoot could also survive in Oregon. Report that got me back out into Days Creek again uh, came to me around August, I believe it was August 19th, and we went out on the 20th. Um, we tried to make contact with the people, and uh, basically they went to my administrator who lives in Kentucky and said that they didn't want to uh, participate in the interview or, or the research or whatnot, but they did make a report that they were up Days Creek Road and they had stopped for one reason or another and the small fir trees were parting kind of like you'd part your hair with a comb and it went up through there and they are pretty sure that they had seen a Bigfoot that day. I couldn't really put a accurate area of where they saw this happen and Day Creek is such a large area that um, it would take a person probably a full year being out there every day camping or whatnot to walk even 50% of it. It's a huge area. Dace Creek, South Myrtle, Dead Man Creek, uh, you can go all the way to Tiller. I mean there, there's so many roads and so, many, so much forest up there it's just it's forever huge. Uh, sh uh, Gary and Shannon Dingus were out scouting for deer on BLM Road 29-3-0 and w the road they were on is just a spur off of the main BLM road which was used for logging if several years back. They found a trackway consisting of three tracks in a uh, clay bank and the tracks were five feet ap apart going up a hill. They were on the right side of the road there were several tree breaks and broken down bushes in the area. I couldn't determine whether they were from a, a, a Bigfoot or another animal or weather. Um, they're very adamant about the tracks. Um, they actually kind of made a mistake though and waited a week before they contacted me and the tracks had degraded enough to where I couldn't do any castings. Uh, I also have several photos of our just old research from last year and year before. Um, we've had several incidents with tree knocks, hoops, um, howls, if not recorded. We've got an actual photo of some eye shine. Um, we've got a photo of some makeshift shelter. We can't tell if it's human built or built, you know, by Bigfoot. Um, uh, Christina Lancaster and her boyfriend Mike got photos of footprints last winter, which I did a research video of that. That's very close to Days Creek. I mean, this place is, I mean, they're right there together. Also, um, Tanya Garcia sent me messages. Uh, she had a face-to-face -face with a Bigfoot up in the South Myrtle area near Days Creek. We've got, we've got the track castings. We've got the track way, the three track way, Gary and Shannon, we found tracks on another BLM road, um, Christina and Mike found their trackways when the snow, it, it was only one track in the photo, but there was, they said there was tracks going all the way up the, the hill, and they were far apart, and they were big, and what I want to say about the area is there is so much wildlife there's everything you can think of up there and the plant life especially down in the valley where we've taken the track castings is uh, is just there's everything down there and I'm sure that uh, there's few people that live in that valley that, that grow uh, greenhouses and they've got chickens and and uh, uh, we were just through there yesterday and we had I would say over 300 turkeys from one end of the road to where we stopped and filmed. So, and a turkey weighs, uh, even a small turkey weighs 10 pounds, so that would be something. Um, 
some tons of wild raspberries, blackberries, everything else. They're not in season now, but they're still out there. They're still, um, uh, there's all kinds of stuff out there to survive on and eat. So is Bigfoot calling Oregon home? The area already shows that he can support large animals. The mounting evidence presented by Bobby and Karina suggests that Bigfoot is in the area. Bobby and Karina seem to have a passion for Bigfoot research and even use it as family time with their children. We must ask Bobby and Karina, what got you into Bigfoot? And why do you do research? Well, what got me into Bigfoot was, um, I would have to say my husband, we were out, you know, hunting and one happened to walk in front of us and ever since then I've been hooked. I don't know. I just, uh, that unknowing and not knowing what it was, to have to try to find it and see what it was. I'd say that's what got me into it. The unknown. I'd say I do the research just like I said to, to figure out what it was that I saw and to get out there into the field with my husband and spend time with the family and find more evidence to prove the fact that I'm not crazy that I did really see what I saw and to prove it to everybody that I told about it. What got me into Bigfoot was when I was very young, probably around seven, eight years old. I was uh, deer hunting with some friends of the family and uh, my stepfather. And a very large, hairy, nude man stepped out in front of me, which at the time I didn't know what it was. And so from that time on, I've always pursued anything in the woods that didn't look ordinary to me or to anyone else and that's what got me into Bigfoot and I've always been back into it and in 2004 while hunting with my wife my brother-in-law and his girlfriend we had one cross right in front of the truck which got me really back into it hardcore and uh, over time I've been trying to submit all these sightings and information and never could get anyone to do it Well, back in uh, 2011, I started getting on Facebook and getting into uh, stuff on the internet. And uh, after contacting the BFRO and uh, uh, Oregon Bigfoot and several other entities that were supposedly take my uh, sighting seriously, both sightings actually, I uh, met through the uh, Facebook a man named Tom Markham who took me seriously and actually had one of his researchers do a follow-up kind of like tell the story and question and right out right out of the gate our our uh, sightings and investigations went on to uh, YouTube as a phone investigation and then I kept bugging and bugging the crypto crew to put me on as a researcher and so they did and with my knowledge of the mountains and the area out here in southern Oregon I went ahead and started really going out hard with with my wife and uh, we found tracks and in uh, possible photos all kinds of good stuff and uh, like we're out here today we're out here looking and we've got uh, stuff that is going to be pretty compelling for the website and I'll probably stay in the Bigfoot until I'm too old to walk the woods.